morning, church family. Maybe a little bit uh, dreary and wet outside today, but I am delighted to welcome you all to this morning's worship and remembrance for our All Saints Sunday. We do have a few announcements as we get started. First off, the sign-up sheet for our Christmas party, which is at Prime Restaurant on December 11th, is now up on the lighted bulletin in the hallway, so feel free to sign up for that anytime in the next, uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, second off, and as it's this Saturday, this is the last time we have to hear me talk about it for a while. Coming up on Saturday from 9 to 2 is our craft fair, basket raffle, bake sale, a door sale, all the good things wrapped together in one package. So uh, come out to volunteer, come out to shop, come out to say hi to your church friends anytime from 9 to 2 this Saturday. And reminder to our uh, prayer shawl members that you have a prayer shawl committee meeting to uh, start setting up for that tomorrow at 1 p.m. I believe we'll meet downstairs, yes? Yes, we will meet downstairs. All right, and I think those were all my announcements for this morning. So are there any other news or announcements from the community? Anything that I missed, Ms. Martin? I'm most happy to report that the adult Sunday school class has outgrown their room. So next Sunday we'll be meeting across the hall in what is the condo a room, the billiard room. So if you could please make your way to do that for all. Alright, thank you, Ms. March. It's always uh, a good thing when our groups outgrow their initial environment. So make sure you uh, find Miss Marge in the larger room next week. Any other news or announcements from the community? Anything that I missed? Okay, then we will let the chimes bring us into worship. God is here with God's people. God is here with all of us. And so I invite all of us who are able to rise and we will join together in this morning's call to worship. Remembering all those who have filled these seats before us. We gather to worship the Creator. Dreaming of all those who will fill these seats after us, we gather to worship the Savior. Connected through love with all those filling these seats today, we gather to worship the Redeemer, in whom we are one. Hallelujah. We'll join together in our opening hymn, number 519. Sing the top verses. That will make sense when you open the hymnal. <laughs>
as human beings who live in time and space, past and present and future seem like earth-stinked things to us. But today we remember that this separation is an illusion. For God, who is in all space and every time, all people and all things are together at once. We are together, and because of this, we pray together in unison. Ever-present God, on the cross, you offered us your whole self. Reminding us of what has always been true, that we are your family. As children in Christ, we are one people. For the times when we forget that every person is our family, for the times when we hurt each other with word and deed, forgive us. For the times when we hurt you, Forgive us, help us honor our connection with all who you love. Amen. We take a moment in the silence for the prayers of our own hearts. family squabble, yet still Christ offers grace for the fickle heart, grace for, for you and for me and for everyone. And so we proclaim. Praise we'll have our anthem a little bit later in the service this morning during communion, but for now, friends, I invite you to pray with me as we prepare to read our scriptures. Christ, who makes us one, we are grateful for the saints who wrote down these stories of you who copied and preserved. We are grateful for the saints who will discover these words down the years, even as we cherish them now. And the people say, Amen. Our shared scripture this morning comes from the book of Daniel, which is filled with the visions that were granted to him while he was living in exile in Babylon. Daniel's dreams are strange and often as disconcerting to him as they seem to us. As we see when we read this excerpt from chapter 7, beginning with the first three verses and then jumping to verse 15. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the Holy Ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. 
friends, the first reading. For our New Testament scripture, we read from the letter to the Ephesians. In this passage, while praying for the church members there, Paul reflects on what we are promised as followers of Christ, reminding us that to put our hope in Christ is to invest in the long vision. We read from chapter 1, beginning at verse 11. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Friends, the readings for today, may they be a lamp for our feet, This time I invite everyone to follow along with our celebration of the saints on page three in your bulletins. Today we give thanks for all those who have come before and dedicated their lives to strengthening the church for those who will come after. We take a moment now to light a candle and sound a chime for each of the saints who have passed on from this community over the year, remembering that though they may no longer be on earth, their light continues to shine from heaven and through the ways they touch us. And so at this time, I invite any family of the church members listed in the bulletin below to uh, come forward if they wish to do so and stand before the table to light their family members' candle as I read the name. Herbert Bridegam. And 
hollows. And because we recognize that the saints who we've lost from this community this year are not the only ones, but there are many others who are missed, we take time also for each of us to remember all those we've loved to have left us. But this time, I invite anyone who wishes to light a candle in memory of a loved one to come forward and do so quietly and then return to your seat quietly. Mm -hmm. our memories flowing alongside our candles. We close our ritual of remembrance by noticing the roses on our altar, one for each member lost this year. They are a symbol both of the beauty and the fragility of life 
of gratitude for what we've had and hope for what we'll get to be with careful tending. So let's pray. Oh God, in spite of our faltering faith, you look at us and see beloved children. We praise you for this grace secured by the resurrection. We lift up our gratitude for the loved ones whose finished journeys we celebrate today and give thanks for all those saints who have handed on their faith for us to hand it on yet again. Amen. I invite everyone to rise as you're able and we'll join in singing our sermon hymn number 522, the first two verses. <laughs> from this morning. 
Look, he says, now that you've placed your hope in Christ, you are just as much a part of God's inheritance as I am. Both what has already unfolded and what will unfold in the ages to come, all through Christ's power. What truth I inherited from Christ, I have given to you, and now it is your job to keep giving it to others. So this passage hints at the hopefulness of a faith inheritance that is both here and not yet, both begun but incomplete. Paul and his fellow first wave apostles couldn't have known how very long that inheritance would keep unfolding through the church to come, would not have known as they wrote those words of the history that would come, the history that we do now have. They couldn't have known that it would still be unfolding today, that we would be clinging to the same hope and participating in so many centuries of Christ's inheritance through God and God's church. Today, on the first Sunday in November, we take a moment to celebrate All Saints Day. I like reading from the epistles because I think Paul and his fellow apostles are a good place to start when remembering the saints who paved our way. Not a single one of the church's many denominations would look the way they do today without the foundation laid by Paul's determination to spread the word of truth. But we don't have to look all the way back to Paul to appreciate where we've been and how far we've come. For who we are here at Christ, United Church of Christ, we might perhaps look back to Martin Luther, nailing his grievances against the Catholic Church up for all to see. His ideas inspired a pair of men who wrote a theological question and answer booklet called the Heidelberg Catechism. That booklet would become the basis for the Reformed Church known as the German Reformed Church when its followers moved to America and settled mostly in Pennsylvania in the 1700s. They would put down roots as farmers. Well, they also built one-room churches to keep their faith alive, passing on an inheritance of both the hope of Christ and of a hard-earned living to their children. A century later, more immigrants would arrive from Germany, this time settling in the Midwest. They would call themselves the German Evangelical Synod of North America. It's a mouthful. They too were farming people, and they tried to maintain lives full of personal piety, believing it to be the best path to spiritual transformation, hoping to pass this inspiration to Christ-like living on to the next generations. Meanwhile, in England, groups of 
of Christians frustrated with the national church there had also decided to flee to a new land. Even before their German counterparts, they boarded boats and <coughs> landed at Plymouth, Massachusetts in the 1600s. History would call them pilgrims, but they called themselves Congregationalists. Their descendants inherited a new idea of church governance, one in which each local church was completely independent and in charge of itself. And after all these immigrants funneled their denominations into America, well, a new one sprang up that was uniquely American. They called themselves simply Christians, or as a group, the Christian Connection. And they desired to return to the gospel roots of Christianity amid what they saw as the modern day overcomplications over of religion in the 1800s. They wanted simplicity and scripture to be the primary inheritance of those who joined their idea of church. And 65 years ago, 65 years ago, these four distinct traditions came together to make a new one. They looked at each other's hopes and the inheritances they'd been passing on, and they saw one thing at the center of them, a desire to serve and spread the love of Jesus. So they decided to call their new denomination the United Church of Christ. And they continued to spread the word of truth. The leaders in 1957 designed a constitution and bylaws and a statement of faith that reflected the fusion of these four traditions from which they had come that remembered the saints who had gone before. The first leaders of the fledgling UCC opened themselves to where the Spirit was leading their small piece of the Universal Church, their own group of holy ones, trying to keep alive the hope they had in Christ's power for the next ones to inherit. When we, when we in the United Church of Christ celebrate the saints who have gone before, we celebrate these five traditions, the four that built the church through the centuries, and the one they united together to become. These traditions remind us of where we've been as a community of faith, and they remind us that we are not alone in this faith journey. The ones who came before us each passed something down from Paul's earliest mission trips, through all the big names and the unknown names of church history, and right on down to the people we have known and loved. We are inheritors of the faithful dedication of those who came before. Holding on to that same hope in Christ's power, our ancestors kept building churches, 
so that we and our loved ones might kill them, that those who come after us might inherit our faithful dedication. There has always been a new group of saints to spread the word of truth, and our faith tells us that there always will be. Today and every day, let us remember to look to our inheritance, to the ones who shaped us through sharing of themselves. Give thanks for the saints from whom you inherited Christ's hope. Give thanks that there will be saints who inherit that hope from you. The God who built the church through Paul and through our founding traditions is still building it through the United Church of Christ today, through this community today, through you today. We carry the inheritance of those who have come before and they continue to uh, live through us and through the ones who will come after us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, as we uh, prepare to uh, pray together, are there any joys, concerns, prayer requests to share with the community this morning? Then let's pray, church family. Source of hope. You are the one who connects us with all who have been and all who will ever be. As we honor the saints who have gone before us, as our hearts are bursting for the ones we miss, we remember that word of truth that they are still with us, unseen but connected, grieved but rejoiced for, untouched but held fast in Easter's promise. Through you, through your triumph over the empty tomb, we have inherited the hope of a family that is without limits, begun in this earthly life and continued into the eternity of the life that comes after. Through you, through your love that is unending, we inherit a bond with each other that is unending. Through you, through your power that is everywhere and in all times, we inherit the assurance that we are never alone. With gratitude, O oh Savior, for these riches of full and vibrant life, of life beyond the stretch of our wildest dreams, we lift up this prayer to you, even as we say together the very prayer you taught to those who came before us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As we 
uh, listen to our offertory, I invite you to meditate on both those who have come before and those who are coming after. know that God is present in our feasts long before it reaches us. We lift up in gratitude the infinite love of Christ, which draws us into greater connection with God and with each other, uniting us with all the saints who have come before and all who will come after. We proclaim as Christ did that all seekers are welcome and that we share in one faith under one all-giving God who makes it possible our sharing in this one table of divine love. Tune your hearts on our table by reflecting on that presence as you listen to this music. Thank you. 
Thank you, choir. I invite everyone now to uh, join with me in the communion prayer. God is with us. Christ is present here. Let us give thanks to God. We give thanks to you, God of majesty and mercy, for pulling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and bounty of the earth and for giving us the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you so call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and victory. We come in celebration of Jesus Christ, born of Mary, Christ lived among us to serve and to save. And so with all the faithful everywhere, we sing joyfully together.
Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. cup of blessing poured out for the forgiveness of all. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. And now friends, as we have been brought together and sustained by our holy meal, I invite everyone to uh, rise as you're able. We will join together in the prayer of thanksgiving and remain standing for the closing hymn. Pray with me. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed this day by Christ's body and blood. Make your universal church a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. This is Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Our closing hymn is an insert in your bulletins. We will sing all the verses.
now remembering those who have come before, dreaming of those who will come after. Go out into the world in peace, be strong and of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, love and serve the Savior, and may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer go with you and be with you 